and a welcome to this episode of Genesis Week, the weekly program of creationary commentary on news, views, and events pertaining to the origins controversy. We here at Genesis Week believe your brain was intelligently designed and God wants you to use it. Remember, if you get lost in cyberspace, you can just punch in wazulu.com or genesisweek.com and you can find us. Best. So I'm your host, Ian Juby. University of Arizona posted a press release with the fun title, UA Astronomers Discover a Planet That Shouldn't Be There. <laughs> you know I can't pass up articles like that. Led by a U of A graduate student, an international team of astronomers discovered an exoplanet, that is, a planet outside of our solar system, which was 11 times Jupiter's already astronomical mass. But the real surprise was that it was in orbit around its star 650 astronomical units. Now, an astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and our Sun. So, this exoplanet is in orbit 650 times farther out from its Sun than Earth is from its own Sun. Now, as we've discussed at great length in previous episodes of Genesis Week, all stellar evolutionary models fail miserably to explain even our own solar system, let alone others. Now, many of these problems are simply man-made problems, because the man that made them was assuming that the universe was billions of years old. And so when the solar system and universe doesn't line up with billions of years, it's considered a problem. Now, the only problem is the assumptions of deep time and the theories of stellar evolution, which are clearly falsified. For example, Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, is giving off 10 times the amount of heat it receives there is so much heat produced that the moon is jetting out geysers some 250 kilometers in height. Besides the mystery of the heat, the next obvious problem is that it simply cannot maintain either the heat nor the jetting out of so much material for billions of years. The problem vanishes if you remove the assumption of deep time and simply acknowledge that the moon is young. But, like comparing a campfire to a small thermonuclear device, Enceladus is nothing compared to Jupiter's moon Io. Now, ten years ago, creationary physicist Wayne Spencer was pointing out the incredible volumes of heat giving off by Io, and its obvious problems for the assumptions of deep time. Io is giving off so much heat that it is even spewing molten lava from volcanoes at 300 kilometers an hour and 200 kilometers high. Loki is one volcano on Io. That one volcano is more powerful than all of Earth's volcanoes combined. The problem here is that Io obviously cannot be emitting such vast quantities of heat for billions of years. As Spencer shows in his paper, the problem vanishes if the moon is simply less than 10,000 years old. All attempts to explain even our own moon have failed miserably. There is no known natural process by which Earth's moon could be formed. There isn't even a theory that stacks up to the evidence. Everything about Saturn's rings show that they are young, less than 10,000 years old. There's virtually zero space dust on the rings. Some of the rings are even braided in a complex orbit. The chunks that make up the rings are all different sizes, but millions of years would have braided them down to one homogeneous size. There is no working model to explain the formation of the rings to begin with, let alone the formation of Saturn itself. Now, back in 1984, now getting on to 30 years ago, Creationary physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys built a model of planetary magnetic fields which was based on the biblical model of a young universe and a young creation. He suggested that when the creator created the planets, that magnetic poles of all of the atoms making up the planet would be aligned. And thus the planets, when first created, would have a very strong magnetic field. That field would weaken over time. And so the larger the planet, 
the longer its magnetic field would last. Now, Earth's magnetic field is weakening, and we've been able to measure this weakening. In fact, examining archaeological artifacts as well as magnetic fields stored in the rocks of the rock record, Humphreys was able to map out the astonishing variations of the magnetic field. Taking everything into account, he was able to pinpoint an age of Earth's magnetic field at spot-on 6,000 years old. Read the research yourself. This all fit in with his model which successfully made multiple predictions for the magnetic fields of other planets in our solar system as well. Now, Based on that model, Humphreys made six predictions in writing in Creation Research Society Quarterly back in 1984. Now, further research and discovery since that time has verified five out of six of Humphrey's predictions and simultaneously mystified all evolutionary models and predictions. None of those discoveries of planetary magnetic fields were predicted, nor expected, nor even explained by evolutionary theories. We will find out about the sixth prediction in 2015 when the New Horizon spacecraft finally reaches Pluto. So is it really that much of a surprise then to read the press release by the U of A regarding this latest discovery of an exoplanet orbiting, or orbiting at a ridiculous distance from its sun? This system is especially fascinating because no model of either planet or star formation fully explains what we see. In our case, the mass ratio is more than 100 to 1, she explained. This extreme mass ratio is not predicted from binary star formation theories, just like planet formation theory predicts that we cannot form planets so far from the host star. Evolutionary planet, star, and solar system formation theories have failed in all of their predictions and even in their explanations for our own solar system. So why are you still trying to beat the evidence with your theories, which have so obviously failed? Meanwhile, creationists are just sitting over here, just explaining what we see and even predicting what we will see decades in advance of what we go and discover. All because their model is simply the truth. It ain't hard when you have the correct paradigm. The universe is young. <laughs>